Hello there and welcome to Frontiers of Innovation, a LinkedIn and indeed Facebook Live initiative brought to you by Canon. We're absolutely delighted that you've joined us for this live hour. So I'm Ethna Trainer, your moderator for this session. And of course, this series today, we're going to be looking at content creators and particularly looking at the very creative world of photography. Now, of course, we want you to be involved. We want you to make sure you've got your questions in there. So keep an eye. We have three great speakers with us today, three great content providers. And this, particularly for me, it's just a fabulous session. There was once a time, I think we all look and there's a secret profession we all wanted to do. And if anything, you asked me way back in the day, might have been a photographer. So um, I'm particularly excited about this session and to see the work that uh, our three creators today are doing. It's really, really absolutely spectacular. So we're so happy we've been able to share them with you. And of course, this is part of our series where we're bringing to you, you know, creativity, innovation, really looking at what's going on and particularly in the world of digital and also as we just turn the corner on the second part of the year here having got 2020 off to a, a bit of an anxious start let's say so really looking at what's been going on for people um, in the the last uh, half of the year and indeed the start of a new decade so let me introduce you quickly to our panelists we have Mohammed Mohazin and Mohammed, of course, a former wartime photographer, um, you know, a double Pulitzer Prize winner. It, uh, I, I have a long list. I don't know where to start, but really uh, somebody whose work is just absolutely spectacular and really has done really, really creative work. We're delighted that Mohammed's joined us. Wendy Mayo joins us also. She's a partner with Dune Photography. We're going to hear from Wendy shortly. And His Excellency Ali Bin Thali also joins us too. He's a member of the Board of Trustees of the Secretary general, of course, also of the Hamad bin Mohammed bin Rashid um, Al Maktoum International Photography Award and a renowned underwater photographer. So you've got to check out some of his work. It's really spectacular. So three incredibly talented people here today. The first thing I want to do is, first of all, welcome you all and ask you, starting with you, Mohammed, if I could, you know, how have you spent the last six months and what has lockdown meant to you as a content creator where normally we probably wouldn't be able to get hold of you because you'd be running around the world. Sure. Thank you very much, Etna, and thanks to everybody who's joining us. Um, you know, for me, photography is my life. It's a lifestyle and I'm always on the move uh, trying to find the story to tell. Um, suddenly, there is something called uh, COVID. There is a pandemic that forces all to stuck at home under lockdown in many places around the world. And this is, was the biggest challenge for me. I'm a content creator. I'm an artist who technically capture images in time and share it with the world to inform them. So this time I have no subject around me to tell their stories. So I shifted to tell my own story within the lockdown. Um, you, you mentioned earlier that you wish that you were a photographer, but for me, Everybody is a photographer. Everybody has the gift of sight because photography is all about capturing moments in time through our hearts, and we need a tool to capture that. So I found myself in an environment that I've never had the chance to see before. I have my tool, my camera, and here the challenge begun. It's all about new challenges, and this is how you learn to adopt to a new reality. We're going to talk a lot more about that, you know, but I can imagine you refined and confined at home. So you have to kind of talking about pivot. I suppose you just started looking around you, so to speak. Um, but I'm going to come back to that. Thank you so much, Mohammed. Thank you. Wendy, you absolutely looked around you and saw something very different. Tell us about um, something that perhaps you might not have done six months ago or possibly didn't even think about. Um, talk to me a little bit about those doorsteps in Dubai. <laughs> Thank you, Ethan, and thank you, everyone. Yes, um, I literally, I found the lockdown very hard at first. As, as Mohammed said, I was taken away from my subjects, um, didn't have that human connection. And when I went out into social media, which is something that I'm fairly, relatively new to, um, I found quite a lot of fear, anxiety, anger, people a little bit disconnected from each other. And it made me feel really sad. And it was all the things that I'd always been fearful about with social media. So I thought, well, rather than complaining or saying, oh, well, this is hopeless, um, I thought well, you can get out there and connect. Now that we can move around, you can get out there and connect. There's lots of worthwhile things to do. So I'd, I'd seen people were doing doorsteps in other countries, and I thought we could do that here, and we could perhaps raise awareness 
and raise some money because lots of people are having a really tough time. There are a lot of us that are very lucky and have been minimally affected, but there are lots of people who are having a, a really tough time. So I found a way to, to marry the two. And Ali, for you, I mean, when we look, thank you, Wendy, we'll come back because I want to hear more about the actual project. Um, forgive me, I'll come back to that. But Ali, talk to me a bit about because, you know, while other people are maybe out and about taking pictures, you're down under the sea, so to speak. Um, you weren't able to do that for a while. But again, you have a lot of other work that you're doing. But how did you find particularly the lockdown, Ali? Uh, thank you very much, Ethan, to have me. Uh, actually, the, lo the lockdown has given me the opportunity to sit, to, to, to do many things honestly, where I concluded in six point honestly. I had the time to sit with my archive. If you ask those photographers who are on move and you ask him for what is the last time that you spend a little time with your archive, nobody will give going to, to answer you with the proper answer because we are all the time on move. Uh, second thing that I was doing my second book, and uh, this has given me a time, more time to spend with, because uh, when you're dealing with a book, to me as a photographer, when I start my first book, I realized that the easiest part was only taking the picture. So by doing the book, it gave me a time to deal with the retoucher, with the publisher, with the scriptwriter, with the designer. So it is a big time that you, you can spend it in the lockdown, honestly. Uh, the third thing is that in my archive, there is a lot of picture where I, I believe that I just go, uh, I used to go with them very quickly. So this is give you a time. You know, I take picture for a little micro where a small shrimp, it could be like uh, one centimeter. And what I discovered in my archive that there is a small shrimp on this, for example, this shrimp, there's a small shrimp on it, which is a two millimeter maybe. So this is uh, honestly, the lockdown was, I, I get really benefit from it, honestly, as an underwater photographer. I'm always in move. One of the good points that I, um, I spend the time with my tools. Uh, maybe I brought a new 1D Mark III camera Canon. So uh, in an underwater photography, Either you, you, you be ready to the, to the frame or the frame is gone for long. It's not going to come back again. So I had to spend the time with the camera, with the diving gear, with comparing the diving and the, the photography at the same time in my swimming pool. Even my kids were jumping while I'm doing the testing for the camera, everything. Um, the biggest benefit for me is I start my project by convincing people buying fine art for their home. Because people, they had a nice time in their home where they discover that they need in this angle a, a photography uh, piece or something like this. So it was really benefit for me, Ethan. No, that's very exciting to hear. And I'm going to talk a little bit more. We will talk about that in terms of content creators maybe standing back every now and then and perhaps looking and getting a bit of the theory because I think nowadays nobody wants to do any theory, but we'll, we'll hold that one for a few minutes. Mohammed, talk to me about what you saw in, uh, in, in, your, in, your, in your steps, so to speak, in your circle, in your house, around. What did you do? What did you do that was different that you haven't perhaps thought about doing before? So photography is all about capturing moments in time. And before I never had the time, I'm always on the move. I'm always covering a story. I'm always somewhere in this part of the world. And here I am in Greece, in my place that I never had the chance to spend enough time within my own uh, close environment. I'm staying at home. I'm a photographer. I'm a content creator who has a camera, who has the gift of sights and I opened my eyes, so now I have all the time of the world. I have plenty of time on my plate. So what I do as a photographer, I simply picked up my camera and I started to see the beauty surrounding me. A lot of things that I took for granted before, but I never had the time to see. So I started walking around within my own environment, around my home, in a mountain just nearby my place, and I started to see things differently. The funny things in the pandemic, the sky started to clear up. There is no more pollution. The environment is relaxed. I started to see animals everywhere. And even I friended a bunch of cats, stray cats, around my home. They became my daily subject. 
And as we know about cats, day by day, you become part of their environment. You're just another big cat for them. So I have a camera. I'm out there. I'm taking pictures. But why I'm taking pictures, it's simply to share with the world that there is a positive angle of what's going on. We should not just give up. We should not lose hope. It's all about hope. It's all about help, inspire, and motivate. I wanted to motivate people, photographers or non-photographers, amateur or professional, that you have a camera, you have a tool right next to, next to you, take advantage to capture these historical things. I mean, it's so important to document what's happening in a different level for the coming generation. There is a pandemic in 2020. We have to tell what happened. I hope in 21, there won't be a pandemic. So how we're going to tell the coming generation, these pictures became so important. But this time, as I mentioned earlier, my life, it's all about me. And that's the tough part. But here you learn how to be patient and that you discover something about yourself that you didn't know before, that if you just open your eyes, you will see the unseen. And this is photography, is capturing the unseen, invisible and make it visible. The environment surrounding me, it became my new workplace. I started sharing these images through National Geographic social media platform. People started to see, I started to receive positive impact from people like, thank you for sharing with me this part of the world that I didn't have the chance to see before. Um, for me, photography is the best way to make a difference. I, I, I'm a photographer to make a difference. I don't just take pictures to glorify and say I'm good or bad photographer, it is to create uh, spread awareness, change stereotype, and raise the voice of the people that are photographed. And here, I had a chance to connect with myself again. It's kind of a therapy. It was tough at the beginning, but then you realize that we are stronger than we think we are. And this pandemic became just a challenge that we have to cross. And if I have this uh, this gift of making people realize how beautiful our world is, I decided to share it with the world and let them react. And I had beautiful feedback from people. It's That's great to hear. Yes. Thank you. Indeed, that really is fabulous to hear. And I guess, too, as a photographer, you're so used to being the one on the other side. And almost, I find it sometimes move. as the interviewer, you know, I'm on the side. It's, it's almost a nice space to be. When the camera is turned around, we're sometimes... We're, we're a little out of our comfort zone sometimes. I'll come back to that in a minute. Wendy, I really want to hear, you know, when you started telling different stories, because, you know, Muhammad Stay looked around his neighborhood. You, you walked out into your neighborhood and saw very different sites and came up with a fabulous idea. Talk to us a little bit and perhaps we can see some of those pictures. Absolutely. So... When I, uh, as I said before, I was looking and found a lot of negativity and I thought, you know, rather than just sitting back and saying, God, that's so negative, I don't want a part of it. I thought, you know, I'll start with my, because we're allowed to walk in our local communities. I thought, well, I'll just reach out locally to begin with. So I, I live in Damak Hills in, in Dubai. And so I went onto my local Facebook group and I said, hey, I'm a photographer that lives amongst you, neighbours. Um, how are you doing? How about I come round and I take a, a photograph of you on your doorstep? However you are, you can you can be as you are in your pajamas. You can be in swim gear. You can be in whatever. We had props. We had all sorts, and um, and I was amazed at the the way I found people. You know, people were struggling with different things. There were people with homeschool that they were dealing with. There were people who were locked down by themselves. Um, so many different people and what I, what I did find enchanting and, and as Mohammed said the growth of it for me to try and create something beautiful from a doorstep um, and with people who are quite stressed and anxious um, to try and connect on a very human level and to see the beauty in just simple lines and shadow and darkness again I found it extremely therapeutic I, to be honest with you I think I got the most out of it I got the best deal I mean, I'll put a few up here now. You have to sh bear with me while I just share my screen. Um, and indeed, many of these that I saw too, one of the things that I noticed, and even a friend of mine who was there too, was people were, they were so happy in the moment. Um, even though you didn't go into their house, you didn't interact, you weren't shaking their hands, you weren't yeah. hugging. It, there was a distance there, but there's a um, huge connectivity. Go through a few of them for me. Yes, it was. I mean, it was hard to say who was more delighted to see each other. I mean, some people struggled, some little ones struggled because they hadn't seen anyone for a little while. Um, but it was really nice to use. I realized how much I use my 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 smile to connect with people. And of course, I was robbed of that with my mask. 
And um, the distance meant that I couldn't get that sort of very close connection. So I was I had to rely on different things. And, and you know, I was very pleased with the outcome because I got some images which I think will become part of everybody's memory as they look back. So some of them are joyful. Some of them are a little bit quieter. And I didn't try and change people. Um, I just interacted with them. And if they were still quiet, then they, they remained still quiet. There were funny ones. You know, there was a guy celebrating his 16th birthday by himself. His sisters are stuck in England. His mum was stuck in England. Um, and he was sort of a bit, well, <laughs> but it was fun. And he took it in good spirits. And um, it's created some memories from people, you know, and I find different places. There's bright light in some. There was darkness in others, shabbier backgrounds. But as a photographer, I found it playing with the beauty of the light and trying to get the best out of the subject that they could represent themselves um, was what I enjoyed. Really, most. really lovely. And again, even what Muhammad is saying there, it's also about marking a period in time because, yeah. you know, probably, you know, these pictures were not going to be taken, but you have, yeah. you know, a, a bank, you've got a body of work that actually tells There's, a story. I mean, the other, I counted the other day, I've taken so far 412 different people. Um, that's families, but it, alongside that, we, I've also been taking photographs of, of um, the refuse collectors um, so that they can send it back to their families and the, um, and the security guys and everything. And, and sort of trying, trying to create a body of work whereby people can look back. Wow. And the ones that you see here are just ones, but I gave people a selection, always some with masks, because people won't hopefully hopefully we won't be wearing masks forever and it will be something we can look back on as as a as a memory but but i definitely found it very joyful to find myself having to find creative ways of making um not just say stand there i'll take a photograph of you at your doorstep but making everybody individual um so yes. it really was my pleasure and really beautiful connectivity it really really is um, Ali, come back to what you were talking about there and the fact that you had time to, you know, almost stand back and take a bit of a, an audit of your work and realize what you were doing and put that time into it. Do you think that all, you know, artists and all professionals and would be professionals, aspiring professionals need to be doing that? Or do you find that there's a rush to throw content out there, Ali, um, because you seem to have got a lot from the theory and reading and looking at all of that things to, to really take your time to, mm -hmm. you don't not, you're not upskilling, but lots I, of people do need to upskill, but how important is it to take that time? Uh, I think lockdown had give us a big message that we are not only a photographer who taking picture. For example, I was really worried about those people who I was dealing with them in Indonesia during my all trips. I have all their numbers, and I was really worried about them to, to lose their jobs. So I said to myself, let me do something different totally by calling them and asking them if they are fine, if they are need anything. Where this call, it's mean a lot to them. It's not, this, this lockdown had, I think, give me a new idea to think with a different perspective to me as a photographer. Uh, I think if you are a photographer, it is really important to have an idea about the photo process. Uh, it's not only about taking picture, it's about deliver a really a clear message with, with your work. What do you want to see from your work? Do you want to show the beauty of the ocean? Do you want to show how God are really, how this creator are really, uh, deal with uh, sensitive things. Um, I during the lockdown as well. I go back and start to read more about photography and philosophy and in, in, in art. To be honest, uh, I watch a movie about, for example, uh, Vivian Mayer. It is one of the most really interesting uh, documentary that I had. Uh, so this is you. Uh, I had built my knowledge. I believe in different way. Uh, as I mentioned before, I used to to want to do a book to draw a line in my uh, life achievement in photography. But when I start to know how the script writer do, how the designer is working, I come down by me rush rush them 
out every time to finish the book quickly. So I think um, a lot of photographer had benefit from that 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 uh, lockdown, honestly. Yes, um, and again, we're all going to talk about how you all shifted to to social media. Muhammad, I want exactly. to talk to you about that. We've all been familiar with social media for a while, but I think during this lockdown and even in the run up to social media and how it's changed what you do in in many ways. Before, you know, we depended on. The, the wider medium in the, you know, the National Geographic, the television, the newspapers to see some of your powerful work, Muhammad. So now, of course, you know, your work, you can show it directly to us and you can you know, touch people one-on-one. -on -one. But talk to me about the power of social media and um, how, it's, how it's changing your role as a content creator, Muhammad. Definitely. So going back to a few years ago, there is this technology came knocking our doors. We have these platforms occupying our lives. And it was a decision for me as a, a professional photographer is how to take advantage of this technology, where in the seconds you can reach millions of people in different parts of the world. And especially behind these people, there are decision makers, there are uh, professionals, etc. So... It's a train that moves so fast, you have to be side by side with it, or you spend your life trying to catch up. Uh, I'm one of the people who came a little bit late on, for example, on Instagram. Instagram is a visual diary, is a visual platform to share pictures. I'm a professional photographer, this is my platform. It's a place where I share with the world what I'm doing. So social media became the place where I inform the world and the place where I show my diary is technically where I'm traveling, what I'm doing. And once in a while, I started stepping in front of the camera. So I usually hide behind my camera and let my photographs do the talking. But this time, I decided to step in front of the camera to address the people for an impact. So social media became a very important platform in my life. I managed to create a foundation that helps thousands of people through social media. I managed to reach a wider audience. Before, my audience was circled about the professional community, photographers, journalists, and as a photojournalist. Um, I used to spend months waiting for a mail to come from New York or London or Emirates of a, of a paper clip shows where my picture got published. Right now, within seconds, I can show where my images went, the impact it created, how many people have seen it. It's a message, and I managed to send this message through social media. Right now, with COVID, when the pandemic happened, we have these tools. So it's your decision how to use this tool for to create an impact. So I started spreading positive messages through pictures. I show my trip to Uzbekistan, where many people never managed to go to a country like Uz, uh, Uzbekistan, through a selection of images. I get a feedback. I never been there. And it's my dream to go after this challenging time. So it became a way to inform, to, as you always say, I'm going to use your words, engage, inform, educate, inspire. So it became a way to, to give all that in, in pictures. Pictures, just for many people, it's not just a camera, you press a button. Pictures are language. It's a voice of the people that you photograph. Right now, when lockdown happened, technically the picture is my voice, my face, my words, etc. So I, I took it in a way to, to make a difference. And indeed, a huge difference. And hopefully before the end of this program, we're going to see some of your pictures Definitely. actually rolling out. Wendy, you said that you were a bit late coming to social media and maybe a bit hesitant. But when you made that transition, I, I think we've totally converted you now. Talk to me <laughs> about that. Well, I think so, because I... the. I had never really engaged. I didn't. I, I saw the worth of it, but I never. As as I think um, it was referred to before, as a photographer, you you don't always keep up with yourself. You're so busy doing that you don't necessarily take a step back and think, "Hang on, where do I really want to go?" You just you just carry on as you are. And doing these, it's given me an opportunity to. I mean, I I in in response to these photographs, I asked people to if they enjoyed them to make a, a donation to a charity. And originally, it was the Ten Million Meals Appeal, um, and latterly after that was reached its target and closed. It was the um, uh, whatever 
touch their hearts, whatever they felt strongly about, whatever they'd come into contact with either in their lives or, or due to the current climate. Um, and people have donated so generously. I mean, I had, um, I've had one person donate two and a half thousand dirhams just for, just for photos. I've had another little boy hearing me describing the process to his parents run up the stairs and, and, and come down with 10 dirhams to give me. And I, I said, you can't give it to me. You must, <laughs> you must choose something, but maybe go on to Dubai. I gave him a, a, a place he could do it on his dad's phone. And he was delighted. And his, it brought a tear to his father's eye because he thought, that's my son. He's heard this. And he's thought, yes, I've got some money. I, I want to give and help people because some people are really struggling, you know, you know in, across the world, obviously, but also even in Dubai. And um, and it's been a, it's been my real privilege to feel as if I've been able to make not only just a difference in in documenting this time for people, but also raise some money and and hopefully help people in a in a in a in a tangible positive way. So and indeed, I guess that act that one act that you did, as you said, inspired more action from others. And I love well, that I story. Like a little they more. weren't helpless at home. Their life wasn't so difficult. There were other things and other people. And actually, they could do something. They could find something. And it's a, like a knock on positive. And that's what's so great about community. And that's what I'm now coming to realize can be so great about social media is that you can, um, through just some small things that you think aren't going to make a difference. I just thought it was a few neighbors in Damak. And now suddenly I'm, I'm all around Dubai and my business partners having to get on board and do it as well. And, and you know, we really feel as if we've, we've created some real positive feeling. And it's, uh, it's nice for me as a photographer, but it, it also makes me realize that there's, there's so much positive and as you can connect to people so easily. And, um, and that's what life is about, really, is that human connection and seeing the beauty in things and the joy in things and understanding when things aren't so great as well. And indeed, I'm being very much part of the community. Now, I do want to tell our viewers at home, please, at any time, start sending in some questions. We'll be very, very happy to take them. Um, Ali, I want to talk to you a little bit about the same thing in terms of the power of social media, but for you in many different ways, because you wear many different hats. And while you're taking those magnificent underwater pictures and okay. people you've got to go to that Instagram account because you'll just be absolutely mesmerized at uh, I had no idea what lived under the sea and um, it's just I'm, I'm still watching and I'm watching all those beautiful pictures and colors and the fish and the, the miniature shrimp I'm looking for them now so I am hmm. but Ali also talk to me about the International Photography Prize and the work that you're doing there and, you know, a center whereby, you know, you mm. would hold some programs before and now you've moved an awful lot of that onto Instagram, onto social media. So for you and indeed for the award and also for bringing, you know, young Arabs into photography mm. As, mm. as a passion, as a career, how has social media changed that for you? Well, the, the social media in Hamdan International Photography Award, HIPAA, we, we had deal with it honestly, sensitively during the lockdown. Uh, we try to let our old channels, as if I can say, as it was a sad time to everyone. We just to bring the joy to everyone. For example, we had hide the, the name of the winner. It was the time where we had closed down before two days of the, our grand event and Muhammad been to our grand event. It's like ce celebrating photography in the opera house. It was a really a sad time for us and to all photographers and we know how disappointment from the global situation they are. So we keep thinking about a very clever way that we can bring the joy to them again. Uh, so we let to use all our channels to to do whatever that we can to make for them that the photography, it is a really uh, sensitive and good art to, to speak with. Uh, I think if you going to go to our uh, Instagram uh, competition uh, or an Instagram account, sorry, you can see that we had delivered a new way to announce the grand winner. We had like a small uh, video for her. We, de we deal with one... Uh, of her friend and tell him that he have to film her and surprise her by she is the ground winner. So she 
she didn't get it. That she, she was shocked, honestly. And it shows that how happy she was. And then we try to promote the other winners in different way. We been spread all their names in the Arabic media, international. I believe the Guardian had an article for us, the uh, the Times, and we've been have a really a nice success where it lead to the name of the photographer. Where I think this is the most important thing. What Hipa do is try to bring names. To the, the, the photographer names to everywhere, try to, to, to send it to, to uh, outboard, try to, uh, to let everyone know about this good photographer where he used to be, nobody knew about him or her. Uh, and then actually uh, so some of the good things that we did, we go back to our archive in HIPAA and we, we show a new picture that we, thought, we think that it didn't had a chance or this, you know, at the end we have 20, uh, 23 winner. We cannot give <laughs> everyone a prize, but we we have a picture of that where we we hundred percent thinks that those pictures are deserved to be a winner in the in the competition. So we pick some picture and share it with the world that this is some of the good picture being participated in HIPAA, but the chance or the decision at the end with the judge community. But we we promote them. To, to let everybody know that there is a good photographer here. Even each, each month we have a special theme, an Instagram competition in HIPAA. We make sure about those theme that it, it dealing with the archive of the photographer that he don't need to go out to take a new picture. Uh, so we try like a, 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 a children face, uh, like a, a bit inside the, the house. So, so we, this is what we had tried to do even as a competition. There's so many exciting things there. And I had really only discovered a lot of the work. And the more I went through your website, and I think we need to encourage people all over Dubai, and particularly the work you're going to do with young Arab photographers. I think this is fascinating. You're working on an ebook. You're working on some great stuff. And we're getting to the point where we're going to be saying to you, when you do it, please put it in English also, because sure. I think everybody wants to share with it. But again, I think, um, you know, I think you also said, Ali, when you looked around that, you know, if it's a normal competition or when people put in, you'll get a few hundred here and there. I believe you got thousands and you were amazed, you said, at the quality of the work that was coming in. Exactly. Honestly, what, if I can say this, what had pissed off from that photographer in the small competition, in, in an Instagram competition, they have a brilliant work. This is, should be in the grand prize <laughs> competition. They, they use it in the small uh, Instagram competition, which is, I do understand. To me, as a photographer, maybe in my archive, there is a brilliant picture where I don't know about it. And this is what happened with Muhammad and with, uh, with, with uh, as, as well. Uh, but um, I think from, from how His Highness believe that this art could gather people we could speak speak the same language with other with photography, uh, and he are deep believe that photography should move parallel with any progress in the city or in the world. Exactly. Indeed, yes, and there's yes. so much, and we'll definitely keep an eye on all the programs that you have at HIPAA. I think it's uh, a lot more people need to know about it, and it's really quite spectacular. Now, Mohammed, of course, you're you're an award winner from HIPAA, but also I have a question here from you, Mohammed, from Aya. And she said, talk to us a bit more about perhaps some of the challenges of refining your creative process in these challenging times, Muhammad. And did you find, you know, obstacles? How did you sort of mentally just say, okay, I'm not used to doing this. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but I'm going to do it. Um, let's be honest. Uh, anything without obstacle is like a meal without spices. We always need obstacles to learn. For me, every failure is just a lesson to be better. So suddenly we are uh, we are in a period where uh, we're stuck. We're stuck. I'm not in my uh, natural environment. I'm in a new environment that I know nothing about it. So what the best to do is pull myself up because nobody will pull me up. It's a challenge. You should be the one who should push yourself at the beginning of the day and the end of the day. We live in a period that you are 
the photographer, you're the writer, you're the videographer, you're the editor. So you're technically the boss of yourself. And that's the most difficult thing is to be a decision maker in yourself. It's easy to send my stuff to, to Ali or to Wendy and say, guys, help me to edit or this or that. But it's so difficult to be the one. So here, here it begins. Be- Insecurity is always seen as a negative things, but sometimes insecurity helps you to be better and look for better. For me, every challenge that comes my way is the beginning and every success that comes is a past. So you need to keep motivating yourself, motivating yourself because yesterday is gone. We live day by day, especially in the industry and uh, let's say in photojournalism. Yesterday is gone, so you, we can't stuck with yesterday. Every day, the new day is a new challenge. Every good picture has a good story behind, and it has a challenge behind. You should always challenge yourself, learn knowledge, knowledge. We should not stuck where we are. I always tell people, every day we learn something new. Young learn from the older one. The older one learns from the younger one, especially right now with technology. I'm trying to cope with technology, but I go to the young one to teach me, to be honest with you. I know the feeling. I know the feeling in that one. Mohammed, stay with me on this because one other area, and particularly when we look at, you know, younger content creators, and this has been a really tough time. And obviously for a lot of younger people who've just come into the gig economy, so to speak, you know, a lot of them, depending on day-to-day jobs, they're going to be shooting an exhibition. They're going to be shooting lots of different things around. That came to a screeching halt. I mean, some might be, you know, anxious at the moment, wondering, is this good? Is this a good profession to choose? Is this the road I really want to take? What advice would you give to them? Because they do have to pause and wait a bit, and it might be a bit tough. You know, what's the next step and what's going to keep them going? I would always say, seek guidance from people you look up to. Contact people. It's easy right now to reach anybody anywhere in the world through social media learn and challenge yourself you don't need to go to war zone or to travel to the end of earth to become known the story could be at the doorsteps of your home look around you look what wendy did for example in her own environment she managed to collect voices and memories that we will look up what i will always my my advice to every young photographer that challenge yourself believe in a cause photography should be for a reason It's not for fun only, it's for a reason. Use this passion, because photography is passion. If you are passionate about what you do, you will always succeed and you should not give up on the first obstacle that meet you. You should keep on persistent. It's a marathon, it's not 100 meter. If I stop 10 years ago when I had my second Pulitzer and I would believe that I reached the top. It's easy to reach the top, it's difficult to maintain. And maintaining is what needs knowledge, seeking guidance, and always look for a new challenge. Look for stories that tells your own story because there is no better way to tell them a story than being part of it. That's what I always say. Tell your sto- your own story through your pictures. And if you're passionate enough, your pictures will reach. Use your social media in a way to, to reach the world. Editors nowadays, if there is a story happening, in Kenya or in Dubai or in Cairo, the first thing an editor from major media platform will go on Instagram and put a hashtag Cairo and see, for example, what pictures were taken within the last 24 hours in this part of the world. So social media became your window, became your wire technically. Is the You know what's a wire? A wire is a news agency, AP, Reuters, AFP. So now you are the leader of this wire. Take advantage of this amazing technology to to reach to get job offers to display your talent begin by showing how much talented you are through these platforms and be creative as you said you've had to learn how to become a marketer you've had to learn how to do the technology that that's package. not your your skill so to speak and now you have to be you have to be able to do it all it's a full package knowledge everything is available online even myself every day i pick up something to learn uh, we don't stop There is no age, there is no gender, there is no religion, there is no limit to what you can learn nowadays. All you have to do is believe in yourself. I usually uh, mentor people and it's easy for me to tell someone it's better for you to look for a different profession. It's 
it's go into a different direction because you will be better as a writer than a photographer because photography is not a job it's not something you study and you say i'm a photographer photography is something it's a, it's a dot built in within but it's passion it's passion it really it's emotion. is yes and again, I'm really, I'm encouraging you to make sure you show us a few photos before we finish this Definitely. hour. Now, Wendy, you came to photography. You didn't spend years learning this. In fact, you, you were an engineer. So I tell know. us again about making that shift, taking that risk, because a lot of people are out there also, and perhaps, you know, it's something they want to do. And, you know, how can, and particularly at a time like this, it might feel a little bit, they might feel a little anxious in doing it. But how would you encourage people, Wendy, to just, to look at this as as a career does it start with that content creation i think um for me it as, as muhammad said it was always in me even when i was electrical engineer i was very much into landscape photography i used to take my time to relax and and be at one with nature and that was my my happy place the place where my soul if you like resonated and i always wanted to capture it and 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 i kind of started teaching myself just for my own amusement many many obviously obviously many years ago <laughs> and um and i moved forward like that and then it it came to be that people would see photographs of mine on my walls maybe or and things and they they said to you, hey could you come and photograph as i was an engineer interiors or or in buildings for architects and and i did and i kind of I enjoyed it. I was surprised I enjoyed it, but because I was photographing somebody else's passion, somebody else's great work, you know, and trying to make it beautiful and, and see it as they saw it. And, um, and then gradually I started taking photographs of people, which I thought I would never enjoy. And, um, and I found I did. So I took some courses because, and researched more. And as there has to be learning. It can't just be, oh, I'll just pick it up and I'm just going to take a photograph. I mean, it can be, but I don't think you're really going to grow that way. Um, there's a lot of a lot of reading, a lot of research. I did a, a, a course at a university while I was still an engineer because I couldn't just say, oh, I'm just going to be a photographer and give up my day job. And I would say that to some people as well, that it's you don't have to choose one or the other. If you've got something that's a passion, if there's something that you want to, you, you care about and you want to represent in a photographic way, then then do it. Do it. Um, don't wait for somebody to tell you it's okay, but do some research, play with light, play with your medium, understand your equipment and, and enjoy it. And you, cause you don't know where you're going to end up. It's only just going to be a, a start that you're going to make. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to find yourself moving in a way that you hadn't anticipated because you just thought, Oh, I thought, as I thought, Oh, I just enjoy doing, um, landscapes. But now I find that I just have a real passion for connecting with people and getting them to to relax so that you can actually see them, not the I have to put a filter on my face and and edit this, but actually them. And they actually find that they enjoy the photographs of themselves that are just as they are. And um, for me, that's a real it's a real it's an additional passion to the photography. But I didn't I wouldn't have imagined I was going to do it back then. It's just something that evolves. And that's wonderful to hear. I've had a few questions in, particularly for you, Wendy. And I think everybody, you know, so touched by what you've done here. But two questions, one even from Ezra and from Claudia as well. Um, talking about the fact that now you've done this project, um, yeah. you know, this has touched you as well. What are you going to do next when lockdown finishes? You know, um, well, does life go back to normal and it's, you know, sort of you know wendy camera for for sale so to speak i mean pictures for sale tell us a little bit about maybe what you might think about or has this shifted how you think it has it has because i think particularly with a photography firm you get very bogged down in in the fact that you're doing certain things you know and i've always taken a delight in doing them well so even if i'm doing corporate headshots for example which you would think mm, it's about that person really seeing that person, getting them to really relax, because that's when people really look almost beautiful, which is bizarre, <laughs> but that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the, so anything you do, you can find a beauty in it. And there's still an element of doing that, but there are also other projects that I've been sort of doing as a side, as some artwork and some other things that I've perhaps put on the back burner, but that are important to me. Um, and I'm now realizing that perhaps I should with social media and everything, I should get 
sort out an e-platform and perhaps see if anyone's interested in that work and, and put that body of work out there. So there's that to be done as well. So I think it's just a case of seeing that you can grow and that's what social media is so good at is that it's quite fluid. So you shouldn't do it without any temperance. It should be with some study, with some knowledge. It should be with some thought. You shouldn't just churn things out, which is kind of what I had thought Instagram and places like that were. But if there's some thought, if there's some feeling behind it, if there's some passion behind it, then you can change. You, uh, you can change direction. You can think, oh, I can do something different here. And that's the, that's the joy of it. Indeed, I love that. And what you're talking about there in terms of the corporate pictures, um, I have a buddy, Alan Bell, he's another photographer, and his his whole passion is bringing corporate pictures to life. And just what you said, you know, that authenticity to actually stop doing the like corporate picture, you know, which we see so many of them, and then we see so many mm-hmm. bad ones as well. But the fact that you you bring this person's passion, their profession, their life, where they spend all of their day, you know, the most of their life, where they make their money, where, you know, all of that, to bring that, um, to bring that through. Let me move on to Ali. I feel I'm neglecting him a little bit. And Ali, we have a question from you, from Toshi here, particularly looking at um, what's new innovation in underwater photography. Um, because there's a lot of divers too that we mm-hmm. know in this region too and a lot of people that really enjoy and want to explore underwater mm-hmm. photography I'm probably not going to be number one out there on the boat but I can you know live vicariously through your work Ali and look at uh, all of those magnificent underwater creatures Indeed. but what what's new what what is different about underwater photography that you could maybe encourage people and particularly in this region where people have access to so mm-hmm. much of the the Gulf waters okay what's What's really interesting in underwater photography is that they had only just discovered 12% from what exists under there. This is give you an indicate that we know about the moon more than what we know about the ocean. So you can dive tomorrow and found small creature and you can call him a snail. It is that it is that big mystery, a place we don't know about it. My advice for anybody who want to join uh, underwater uh, photography is to work with his budget as much as, make, as, as he can. Myself, if I get a gadget or a camera, we, we are not going to follow all those companies who are producing a new gadget and new camera housing and everything. But... We, what we actually try to do is to build our knowledge to be as close as much we can from the good frame or the creature frame in beauty way. Uh, no, I, I don't believe there is a photographer who could follow all new uh, gadget come to the, to the market. It, it's, really, it's really insane. I mean, uh, 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 every one of them are uh, compete to have the best camera, which is which is very interesting for us. But I would recommend to any underwater photographer to spend two years minimum with what camera he have. And as you start to take a picture, you will know yourself that you're going to need a new level of camera. Uh, a lot of my friend thought the knowledge it is in the camera. No. I had compete with, with one of my friends with a small compact camera in one of the trip. They have, they have that small compact camera. So we had a competition who get a very good picture from that small compact camera. Uh, and uh, I friend of mine, he have a small point and shoot camera, but from much he read about underwater photography, he know that the secret in that small camera is two things. For example, be in the level of the creature and be close as much as you can. I swear to God, if you saw his picture, you will never have a doubt that being taken from, you, you will thought this is a big camera, but it is a really small, silly camera, which is tell us that the knowledge, it is in the, in the photographer, it's not in the camera. What different also in underwater photography, it is not enough to be at the same time at the right place. I, I could add another thing to it with the right knowledge. You can buy 
the best camera, the best housing, where you cannot deal with it. In the, I was in one of the, of the trip and um, another guest, he had uh, one camera, the latest camera and the latest housing and the latest light. And from the first dive, he had a leak in his camera. So you have to spend more time with your with your gadget, with your gear. You have to train more and more to be ready at that at that time. I think uh, it is very important to know about all your 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 uh, your camera. Indeed, and uh, I don't know if I want to come eye to eye with the sea creatures now. I'm going to let you do that for me, um, Mohammed. Let me bring you in on this because. What I'm hearing from Wendy and I'm also hearing from Ali. And again, when we look out on the market there, people are just going, just go do it, just go shoot and put it up there. But I'm hearing that it's about, you know, also taking the time to know your craft, to know, you know, that you want to be a, a professional and that it's not about just shoot and shoot and post. Um, talk to me. You, you discovered photography at a very, very young age. Bring us to a little bit of your story and what would you advise young photographers? What do they need to add to the fact that they can point and shoot? Because I'm hearing, you know, from both Wendy and from Ali too, you need a little bit more, the eye, the passion, but you also need the knowledge. And where do you get that? Look, definitely it's quality, not quantity. And that's the differences between using a smartphone and a professional camera. I'm the master that the smartphone is simply a tool. It's all tools. It's a smartphone or a camera, but that tool does everything for you. I'm, I'm no longer the master. I'm no longer the photographer. There is this device, decide this is the shutter speed, this is the aperture, and here is your picture. I need a camera that I can control to control the narratives, to control the pictures, to tell the story in a very professional way, reflects exactly. But what do we need to think of right now? Not everybody can afford a fancy camera, a fancy lens, etc. But, you know, you are the master behind the camera, whatever camera, is it the older camera or new camera, you're still the one who plays with this camera by capturing the picture, with knowledge, knowing what you are doing. Technically, we don't say shoot, we say capture. And that's technically what we do, we don't shoot. You know, we capture, we photograph, we document, we capture picture and simply the smartphone, you shoot there. I'm not a shooter, I'm not a gunman. I'm a photographer who capture moments of time with a, with a camera that gives me equality, that makes me control exactly what might come at the end after I press the button. I fell in love with photography when I was nine years old. It's the moment I met my grandmother's Polaroid. I was impressed by this magical box that there is a, a toy that you press a button and a piece of paper comes out, document that moment. And we carry it with us our whole lives. So I was obsessed with these things. Wow, photography. I studied journalism and political science and psychology. I had nothing to do with photography, but I fell in love with photography. I was passionate about this thing. It became my best friend. So, but I got to learn. I got to have the knowledge. And when people ask me, what did you study? How, how deep you went in your education in photography? I would say I didn't study photography. Wendy studied engineer, as I heard. It's, it's passion built on knowledge. It's important to know your tool, to know exactly what you are doing here, to control what comes out after. And this is what makes difference between a photographer and other photographers, is the quality. is the quality of the picture and the quality of telling the story because pictures are stories to be told of people or animals or our world, our environment, and recently been ourselves, our own story. Indeed, I think that. it comes very much down. And even that background, as you say, but but what are you studying? You're studying politics, you're studying journalism, you're already creating those pictures in your mind, and then you got the camera That's and you made me. them real. So that package comes together very easy for me. It, well done. It's a life investment. Invest. Really? Um, we're Three. running short on time here. I'd love this could we could go hours on this one. It's like we're gonna have to to do another show or we're going to when we can all get back together, we're gonna have to to sit and discuss all this. So I just want a few words of wrapping up from you. Wendy, advice to people out there in terms of content creators and people who want to pick up a camera. Because sometimes I think, Wendy, every we all have, and even as Muhammad said, you know, we're, we're all 
camera people, we can all take a photograph. But I think secretly everybody who has an iPhone really wants to just move it and upgrade to probably a professional camera if they want to do it to the next step. What advice would you give Wendy to, to young people coming into this industry again and making this a career? And I'll ask Ali and then I'll come back to you to close, Mohammed. But Wendy, please. I would say um, the first step is to be mindful of what it is you want to say and what you want to create. And to think about the bigger picture, the bigger, the bigger thought behind it. You know, it's it's all very well doing aspirational photographs of of people and things, but maybe that's not the message you want to put out there. So I'd say first think of your message, then invest whatever you can on the equipment that you want. But it doesn't have to be fancy. I mean, you can people people can work um, miracles with just a kit lens on a on a, a standard. DSLR. It's, it's, it doesn't have to be. I mean, I've been, I've been going around with all sorts of different cameras with a, depending on the humidity, which one I'm prepared to take outside. And, um, and it is just about getting to know it, having fun with light, look at light, have fun with light. It's, and, and think about our world and the people or how, whatever you want to represent and, and just keep those things in mind, the light and the sunnier equipment and enjoying it and the message. Ali, talk to me in terms of, you know, how younger people can get involved in this and particularly people in here around the, you know, and get more um, Arabic photography and get people interested in this. Um, Mm -hmm. HIPAA is probably a great start, but what advice would you give to younger people wanting to come into this profession? Uh, I think a lot of statistics say that to any photographer, when he starts his journey with photography, He's going to do a random picture for everything. He's going to take a picture for uh, faces, uh, children, uh, flowers, uh, uh, landscape. And he's going to spend minimum two years with his camera. This is what the statistic, the recent statistic said. So after this two years, you will discover yourself minimum in two themes, like wildlife and uh, micro, for example. So my advice to them that first, they have to spend the time to understand the ability of the camera. A lot of photographers or a lot of uh, lovers of uh, photography, uh, art lovers, they thought about it's only about the good big lens and the big camera. No, it is not like this. It is the, the, the photographer who created this. So my, my advice is to any one who want to join this field is to spend the time to understand how is the camera working? What is the ability of the camera? Otherwise, they will get bored very quickly. This gadget have a limit. Don't expect from it to have a, a Steve McCurry picture, for example, where everyone know it at the first picture. No, you have to spend the time with it. Then, for example, if you, if you found yourself that you are going to the portrait, read more about portrait. Uh, watch many uh, YouTube uh, cor- uh, uh, courses, advices, follow those people who take picture for uh, portrait and street life photography. This is will bring you a very close to their line and it will raise your, your experience quickly. We, um, me, I have, to, uh, or back a day, I have with, with, the, with the analog camera, taking picture, develop it, and come back to see it, the processor of uh, the education from the camera, it was really long. It is, it is re- a really long matter. Muhammad now had reminded me with my mom when I started to take picture in 1992. I used to develop a lot of film where my mom asked me to slow down with the budget. He said to me, I spend this amount in the house and I spend the same amount with you. So, you know, after now, uh, when uh, I uh, in in last last two years I had a speech uh, in HIPAA speech in the grand event where everybody is there, uh, highnesses and royal family was there, and I found my mom was really proud of me. So I tease her where I said, hey, "Mom, remember when you asked me to slow down with the budget? I believe you are proud of your son now." She said, "Whoa, whoa, this is my investment. Don't talk about it. This is where I put my money." So, uh, yeah, th- this is where Muhammad had reminded you the story. My advice to them is to read more. Nobody's reading, I know, nobody's reading at that time. To, 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 to follow what they love after 
a time where they spend it on the camera, they will discover from their photo that they love something. They love portrait, they love uh, whatever theme is this. So if you discover yourself that you like portrait, follow portrait. Don't waste your time doing uh, everything you want to be everyone. No, no, no. Just, just follow your, your soul. Where is your soul is going and where, where your love is going? That's it. This and go with advice. your heart. Absolutely. Exactly. Great advice. Now, Muhammad, I promise I give you a closing word here. I can give you about 30 seconds, but you're no a student of journalism and you know how to shoot. So give it to me fastly. Or you Definitely. know how to capture. Beautiful. So first, know yourself. Second of all, invest in the environment you're working on, spend a lot of time, become part of the landscape till you become invisible. And this is the moment you'll be able to capture a picture. Photography is all about feelings, emotions, telling a story. Fail, because failure is the only way you will learn and seek guidance from people that you look up to. We are all in this together. This is what I always say. I started from zero. Nobody started on the top. It's a challenge. It's a marathon. Keep seeking guidance and help. We are all there for you. Super. Well, thank you so much. And you thank leave you. us with that great sense of inspiration. And indeed, you all leave us with that great sense of hope, with the great work that you've been doing you. for it's the past challenge. few months and making thank sure you. that you've been getting through this. And tremendous advice there to young would-be content creators and to people who are out there doing it right now. But I think if you're going to be in photography for the long term and if this is going to be your chosen profession and this is what you want to be, it, it starts at the heart. I think that's the big message that we got there. Mm-hmm. Mohammed, Wendy, Ali, thank you all so thank much you. for joining us. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you, thank you very much. And to all of you at home, thank you for being with us. Thanks for some of your questions there. Um, This series from Canon will, of course, continue. We're looking at innovation. We're looking at creativity. We're looking at digitalization. We're looking at everything that is impacting your world and really bringing this to you on a weekly basis and bringing you up to date with, you know, what's new, what's different, what's exciting. We've already looked at education. We've looked at how to work. We've looked at lots of topics, and we're going to continue looking at that, and we'll be looking at the future of printing actually next week on the 29th. So Wednesday, 29th of July, we'll be back here. So from all of us at Canon, uh, to all of you, stay safe, stay well, stay happy and stay healthy. Thank you so much for being with us.